In this presentation we're going to look at the number of Horizon Cube applications. Let's first have a look at what is a Horizon Cube. Basically this is a dense set of auto-tracked correlated 3D stratigraphic surfaces. The way we are auto-tracking the seismic data is by tracking the dip field. So the first thing we do is we calculate from the seismic a dip steering cube. At every position we then have the local dip and azimuth of the seismic data. And this is the main input to our tracker. So we're not tracking amplitude or phase, we are tracking dip. The uh, solution is constrained by at least two framework horizons, a top and a bottom, but there can be more to get a better uh, constraint on your data. If there are faults in the data, you have to map these up front. Once you have calculated the horizon cube, there's a whole range of different applications available that allow you to extract more geologic information from your seismic data. You can go into sequence stratigraphic interpretations, well correlations, flattening of the data, the well-known Wheeler transform. But you can also use the horizons for very detailed geologic model building, improving seismic inversions, and thereby also improving rock property predictions. But there's also a scala of unconventional uh, usages like pre-drilling geohazard identifications, uh, shale gas exploration and geosteering. And we'll have a look at uh, some applications now. The first example is from offshore Abu Dhabi. We're talking about an existing oil field. It's a Rudist Reef Shoal Limestone Buildup Complex with high production rates tied to certain discrete zones. The Reef complex has been uh, decomposed into six depositional cycles and that is purely based on well data and core information. The cycle boundaries were not mappable on conventional seismic amplitude and similarity trackers. But we were able in this case to compute a horizon cube from the dip field and this allowed us to come up with a much more accurate geologic model on which all the economic field decisions are nowadays based. Here we look at uh, two cross sections through the reef complex. The colorful lines that you are seeing are the auto tracked horizons from the horizon cube. The sequence of maps above is the field model before the seismic study and you can see it's based on well data only. It's very coarse. You see all the bull's eyes caused by the gridding algorithm. The lower sequence are the new set of maps that are based on seismic information from the horizon cube. And you can see there's much more detail in it. Here are cross sections through the field. Above is before the seismic study and below is after the seismic study. Again you can imagine that you will have completely different flow patterns in these sequences. And thereby also different development strategies. Second uh, example is from an unconventional play. We are talking about uh, heavy oil, tar sands in Canada. Um, it's a fluvial estuarine depositional system, about 40 meters uh, thick reservoir, porosities in the range of 27 to 30 percent. And these deposits are uh, developed using steam assistant assisted gravity drainage. That means you're drilling two wells. In the upper one you're injecting steam and the lower one you're producing. Now because we have a very heterogeneous pay interval here you really have to know where to steer your uh, wells to get an optimal uh, development pair. In this case also poor quality seismic, patchy amplitudes and it was not possible to use conventional trackers to look inside the, uh, the reservoir unit. But again we could compute the horizon cube from the dip field and this has helped us to actually ha steer the wells for optimal um, um, developments. The middle section, no sorry, the left section is the seismic uh, input data. It's very noisy and the first thing we did is to apply dip steered filters. The dip steered filters cleaned up the seismic, then we used the cleaned up seismic to compute um, again the dip field and that new dip field was then used for the auto tracker to come up with this horizon cube. And again all the colorful lines here are um, just tracking the dip field. 
Now the next thing we did is we used a trick. We are selecting uh, a top and a base horizon from this horizon cube, automatically calculate the isopack thickness and remove everything that falls below a certain threshold. And in this way we can actually see inside the reservoir unit and visualize these type of channelized bodies. And these are exactly the way uh, we would like to position our wells. So the geosteering should be along this well trajectory to follow the channel and any way that you hit this channel uh, in an oblique way you will have a less efficient um, producer. Next example is to show how the Horizon Cube can help in improving seismic inversion by building much more uh, detailed geologic models, in this case the low frequency model. We're going to do an experiment with two seismic inversions. The first one is a conventional seismic inversion in which we built a low frequency model using only the top and the base horizon. This is the way we do it conventionally. We have uh, in this case four wells and the well data are interpolated between the two red horizons. In the second experiment we're building a low frequency model with all these additional green horizons which have been derived from the horizon cube. Now the first low frequency model looks like this. So this is interpolated between top and base horizon and you can see we have a mismatch in the ellipsoids where the model is not really adhering to the seismic reflection patterns as opposed to the model that we have built with many horizons which looks like this. This one is really following the reflection patterns. So going back and forth two horizon model, many horizon model, two horizon model, many horizon model. Now the problem with seismic inversion, model driven inversion, is that what you put in is also what you get out. And that is exactly what we see if we invert these two uh, seismic volumes, the same volume, but with different low frequency models. This is the end result, so the seismic inversion using the two horizon model. And we see basically the model coming back to us. And here we have the inversion result with the many horizon model. This one I would uh, trust because it follows the seismic reflection pattern, it's consistent with my seismic. And this one, the two horizon model, is simply not consistent with my seismic. Now in this particular case we had one blind test well, so a well that was left out in the model building. And at this well we can compare the seismic inverted result with the actual well logs. And what we see is with the two horizon model we are under predicting, that is the cross plot on the left, and with the many horizon model we are predicting spot on. Another application of the uh, horizon cube is in well correlation. We can build random lines through our wells and then pick our markers in the wells or QC our markers using the seismic as a backdrop and uh, having the guidance of the horizon cube to help us with the correlation from one well to the next. Sequence stratigraphy is another example. If we look at one seismic reflector, then basically we're looking at a geologic timeline. So if we are capable of mapping all the reflections in a seismic volume, then basically what we're doing is we're mapping geologic time. And this allows us to reconstruct the depositional history over time. What you're seeing here is the horizon cube as it is progressing over geologic time and you see different stacking patterns emerging as we uh, continue in time. Now we can then also use these horizons to do this Wheeler transformation. In the Wheeler transformed domain the vertical axis has become relative geologic time. And what we see here is how far each of these units has been preserved. We see how the depositional center shifted over geologic time, first going basinwards, which is to the right, then going landward, then basinward, landwards, basinwards, and so on. And this kind of cyclic uh, behavior helps us to do a systems tract interpretation. 
And this is one of the main goals in sequence stratigraphic interpretation, to come up with a system structure interpretation, as this will help us to understand the depositional environment and to come up with uh, possible positions where we may find stratigraphic traps. This is an example of pure exploration. This is a huge line, 400 kilometers offshore eastern Africa. And here there's no well data in the neighborhood. And the um, Horizon Cube was basically used to understand if we could decompose the uh, mega sequences into individual components and understand where we may have potential um, reservoir units uh, deposited. This is on a much smaller scale. In this case, the Horizon Cube was built around a potential channel which has been decomposed by computing a small Horizon Cube around the target uh, area. Where, and this helps us to understand the, uh, the, uh, the channel uh, complex and to help us with uh, geosteering a potential well through the uh, most uh, beneficial reservoir units. Another replication, this is a pre-drilling drilling geohazard in a small cube around uh, a potential target well that needs to be designed, 8 by 8 square kilometers in this case. We're going to compute a horizon cube and then we're going to compute all kinds of attributes, uh, seismic amplitude, energy, similarity, and we're going to Wheeler transform these attribute volumes and then slice through the volumes to identify potential geohazards that need to be avoided by the drilling bit. And here we see an example of one such horizon and the uh, slice um, in the Wheeler domain where you can see channelized uh, or channels that have been picked up on this, on this uh, slice. And uh, we also see uh, higher amplitudes within the channel complex, and these may be uh, gas-filled uh, pockets that need to be avoided when we design the well. <laughs>